Okay, cool. I actually prepared for this meeting. So I have literally everything set up. I'm going to share my screen real quick, just in case something happened like last time and I can quickly jump back in. So this time I'm going to share my entire screen because I do want you to see some of these steps that I take to go through and prep these themes and me, if you're an advanced user or someone who's very familiar with HTML and CSS and maybe to hear me talk about some of these little things, but I believe it'll help a lot who are not familiar with just some of the things that I do, or at least being able to look at the code a little bit differently. So can everyone, or my screen okay? Are we good here? Seems to not crash this time. So as long as, okay, perfect. I've been using theme forest for years. There's hundreds of different theme companies out there. I like theme forest and the themes that they have back there, but they also show up in all the other places. And so when I look for a theme, what I did today, how about I just set to Sage first? So what I want to go through is the import process. There's been a lot of troubleshooting that I've done over the last two weeks. Most of it is just small stuff, like a loader's loading for me to get access to it. Different things don't show up, such as icons, missing file assets that you should have had, putting the head script or the head file or the, the code from the head in the wrong spot, putting the code from the footer in the wrong spot. But those little things, once you quite you get past that, and also get past the fact that you don't really necessarily need to understand everything about the code. You just need to understand what you're grabbing. In addition to that, there's themes that you're not going to want to import. And I talk about this, hey, you have a WordPress theme. You can definitely install a WordPress theme, but depending on the theme and depending on what you've used. But I'm telling you, if you look at the code and look at what is happening to these sites, importing from there is oftentimes a bad idea. Now, of course, if you're just trying to Hey, I'm a, um, I just want my site in here. I'm not looking to build themes. I'm not looking to do all these things I'm going to explain today. Then yes, it's extremely important to have your current site from WordPress in the system working the exact same way. And if you're not an advanced user, you're going to run into a lot of issues just because there's so much junk in there that you don't need. And you got to be able to see what you need to move out. Not saying we shouldn't offer a better solution. And we are currently working on the ability to import from WordPress, especially from the XML export. In addition to that, making sure you have the assets loaded in the right place. Outside of that, we'll be able to import straight from a URL. ClickFunnels is easy because we're, we basically just grab their HTML code and pull their head assets and put them in the right place and footer and also high level. And we're definitely going to target that migration as well as, a, you know, put in your, your URL and click. However, having the flexibility or the control to build out your own templates, the more that you can understand this process and the easier we can make it, or at least educate you on how to do it. Sky's the limit as far as what you can do, it's especially turn it into a profit center, because that's what I'm all about, really, to understand that creating small business websites, and there's no reason on earth you should be building a website from scratch for any small business ever. You should start from something that's already been proven, that already looks great, that's already optimized. It's already done in a way that, you know, going to provide good rankings, and that's your starting place. And so that there's value to that. One, if you're servicing small business owners, you're starting from something that you literally can transform in a couple hours for the client, which makes more profit margins, or two, unleash it to that small business owner to come in and edit themselves and customize them themselves. So today, I know several have mentioned that they're hitting issues with the import process and a lot of those troubleshooting stuff I'm going to go over. I meant to get with actual live examples. I know Oren sent me a few. If I didn't reach out to you, I apologize. Feel free to throw in the chat that, hey, I have this site right now. I'm importing. Feel free to go into my account. I'll do it on the other monitor so no one sees me going into your account and accessing it. I just need to know the name of it, of the site. The reality here is that I want to walk through my import process and then go into customizing tags. So that's been another issue. This tag is not populating on the builder and I'll talk through that. In addition, setting up those custom fields. So when you're inside a, a profile and you want to add your custom information, how it shows up on the site, in addition at the funnel level. Hey, John, you could use mine if you want. It's a, it's an experimental site that I was working on LA computer service. It's already hooked up with everything in terms of the, the pointing to your servers. So 
Awesome. I absolutely will do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this import, talk about all the things that I know that are having issues or that I've experienced over the last two weeks with being really close. And then I'll get into your account on a different monitor and I'll, uh, I'll go into that one and actually troubleshoot with whatever issues you're having. I haven't loaded anything on it yet. It's just, I have it pointed to it. It's a 404 error, but you're welcome to do what you like with it. Cause it's separate from my other account. Perfect. I appreciate that very much. Okay. Okay. Let me pull this over here. So I started with this theme. One of the things that I look at for themes, whether it be from ThemeForce or anywhere, you don't have to just use Bootstrap. You can use whatever, but Bootstrap 5, I'm just telling you, it's just so easy to work with. It's just, I love it. There's a lot of great themes with it, but you must preview the site and look at these sites that are out there. If you're not using Bootstrap 5, pretty much every Bootstrap 5 is going to be really easy to import. Unless there's something crazy that they're doing, which and not crazy, it's in some regards pretty awesome, but using JavaScript to render your CS files and your JavaScript files, I'll show you what that looks like and how you can avoid those. You're not going to want to do those because you're going to spend too much work getting it to where someone can actually go and edit that site inside of a builder. It wasn't designed for a builder, but these types of site right here. So when you click on live preview. Of course, this is in a frame, so you're going to want to get out of this frame. New tab. So this site here, all you do is view source, and you're looking for as clean as possible up here, right? So all the other stuff up here, you should not care about. All you're looking for is the link and style sheet in the head. Now, sometimes you'll see JavaScript files up there. You're obviously looking for those, but... You really only want this. You don't want any of this other stuff up here because our CMS builds the title and the meta structure for you automatically. So you don't need it. You don't need to put it in. This is a perfect example as well, because if you notice when I refresh, we're going to run into a quick issue when I import this. There's a little loader on there. You can use the loader. You just need to know where to put the loader. And this is the little preloader right here code. And it's not as easy as this one, but... Again, it's just one of those little things. If you know what you're looking for, you can easily find it. You remove it. You're going to put it in a different place. But in the head section, you're looking for this. You're looking for as clean as possible up here. It doesn't matter if there's 20 of them. If there's just a bunch of junk and you'll see it, you do view source on your WordPress site, you'll just see thousands of lines of useless stuff that you don't need. And so then that's when you need to know which file you need to grab. When you buy a theme like this, it's already built good. You're going to see this just in a perfect organization way, organized way, and easy to grab. And then down here in the footer, right above the close of the body, so you get the close of HTML, close of body, you're going to see all the scripts files here. And so there's some scripts that you're not going to want, just knowing it has to do with email decode. Doesn't mean you can't put it in there. It's just some things I would remove that I'm not going to use. You don't have to worry about that if you don't know, just use everything here. So to start off with this theme, this one's a great one because it's just the hierarchy is good. The code structure is good. If you're not familiar with code, it's hard to understand what's good and not good. Just look for less mess above the close of the head here. And like I said, if you stick to Bootstrap 5 or well-documented HTML5 sites, those are going to be fine to import. It's just when you get into migrating a client site over or your own site through with a bunch of different plugins or maybe especially Elementor or just some of these other CMSs that do a lot of injecting and bloated code in there. It probably works and loads great for you that you're looking at, but this, it would load so much better if you didn't have all that. But at any rate, I picked this one out. I thought it looked pretty good. I, my concept here, as far as what I would install is, okay, I'm going to use this for all my agents or I'm going to use this for my locational website or whatever. So I'm going to build this in my funnels and template section. So because this is Bootstrap 5, right? So Bootstrap 5, I'm going to go ahead and use the Bootstrap 5 template that we already have built into the system. And so I'm going to hit create new funnel and I'm going to use the Bootstrap. You can use blank imports. Bootstrap's already then in there. So there's two less files I have to set up. Plus it already has some of the content blocks that I can reuse and things like that. So in this case, I'm not going to use blank imports. In most cases, if it's not Bootstrap or Bootstrap 4, you would use blank imports. But in this one, I'm going to do the Bootstrap, which is called insurance theme. I'm going to hit clone. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go into this site. Of course, we've seen this. If you've done this, it's the bootstrap here. So now what I want to do is go into my asset manager. And so I did share the entire window. So you should see this. So this is what you get when you buy a theme. You download it. You're going to, you may see all the CSS and JavaScript folders, or you may see something like this with assets. And then you're going to see all the HTML. You don't need to load up the HTML. You just need to load up your assets folder. If you're downloading from WordPress or any other site, or you're scraping from a site, copying it from the internet, you really only want where all your CS JavaScript and images folders is at. You don't need all the other stuff that comes with it. You just need the assets. And so in this case, I am going to go out to my asset manager, which sits up here. The file manager, think of it, this way, it's just a easy way to access files that you can copy to clipboard and paste in and email templates or whatever. Obviously, if you're switching out one image, it's going to use the file manager. Asset manager is for loading up all your assets, everything that you need for, for this theme. And so you'll see this relative path. So that's your path that's going to be to this folder. This is what you're going to put in all of the code inside the site. You want to break that down. I'll show you how to do that. This is a starting point. You would create a folder, whatever it may be. It could be themes. It could be the clients. It could be whatever. In this case, I'm just going to do themes. And then inside themes, I'm going to create another folder. So new item folder, and I'm going to call this insurance. I'm going to hit create. So inside this folder now, I'm going to go into it. So now this is my relative path. I have themes, insurance. So everything I put in here, I'm going to need to link up at some point when I start my import, which is this right here. See how it's asset, CSS, bootstrap? I am going to take this, and that's what I'm going to put in between here. So that's how I link everything to the asset manager when I import. And we'll do that in just a second. So now that I have my folder structure set up, I'm going to click on upload. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to drag that folder over. And so this is going to upload everything. So when you upload these folders, you may see an X mark for certain file types. I think I've covered all of them. I know others were having issues with SCCSS, map files, all that should be squared away. You should be able to load up anything that has come with your theme, except PHP files. It's the only files you're not going to be able to upload to our platform for security reasons. And so if you see an X here, then let me know that, hey, this is a certain file type that I can't upload and we can do because you're going need to need those. In addition to that, anytime you have issues where something is not loading or this image is not showing, it's likely because you don't have it mapped properly to your asset folder that you've set up. So in this case, now I have all my assets set up. I'm going to now start the import process with the, the code of the site. So several different ways you can do that. If you're working on the theme, you download it, it's on your desktop and you open it up and you want to do view source. If you're using a code editor, I use PHP Storm, whatever, you, I hate to even say the word Dreamweaver, I'll show you how old I am. So whatever code editor you're using, or you can just use Notepad, it doesn't matter, or view source. You can do the coding inside the platform or pasting inside. I hate to say the word coding. I don't want to scare you with any of that. So view source, I'm going to do the example here on view source. I'm looking for this. And so this is what I'm going to grab. And I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to go out to, let me move that over here, to this builder here. And so where you're going to put this at is in the templates tab. So this templates tab, think of it as I have my head, I have my scripts, what I'm copying, right? I'm copying from the head and I'm gonna copy my scripts. If you have scripts up here, it works the same way. You can throw these in exactly the way you want. I did a more advanced thing before I got on this call and I, this is completely up to you. So I like the ability to have, and a lot of these themes do have this. So for instance, if I go out to this site and click on style, you'll see that it has, is this the one? Basically root variables. I don't want to bore you with too much about that, but there's root variables where you can set at the theme level. I went ahead and did this. this is probably way overkill, but what I did basically is I grabbed the CSS and when I downloaded this, the file, everything was minified. And if you don't know what minified is, it basically takes all your CS code and straight up puts it all in one line and just makes it a smaller file and just it, better for load times, which is great, but doesn't help you edit it, 
right? So you have to unminify it. You can do that with plenty of online tools. So for instance, here, you can come out and just search Beautify CS, and then you can click here and then throw the code that you have from the CSN, hit format, copy it, then throw it in your editor so you can go and make some manipulations if you want to. You, of course, can override all this CS and don't have to do this. I'm only doing it for this purpose just in case you want to do it. I shut off the root. So these root assets, I just shut them off in the style because I'm going to apply this to the theme so I can easily access them and I don't have to worry about it. That's one step I did. Probably you shouldn't need to do that or you won't need to do that if you want to do it. That's how I do it. I just, I turn off the root on the style and then now I'm going to apply it when I put it in. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But again, not necessary. It's just one little thing I like to do. Okay, so now in here, again, the head and the scripts. And so I'm going to copy this. And I am going to come over here and drop this in here. And then I'm going to grab from my asset manager this relative path. Now, one of the mistakes that a lot of anybody who's putting these in they're basically putting this all in the wrong spot. So let me just go ahead and do this real quick. They're basically putting this in either in the raw code editor section or the live coder editor, edit, excuse me, editor section. And then, or they're using this import functionality. The import functionality, there's other training I need to do with that. That's basically where you can take your entire HTML and you just wrap it with some divs and a lot harder than this way. This way is actually really easy if you understand where to get your assets and upload. So in this case, again, like I said, I'm grabbing my relative path that I got in the insurance or the asset folder, and I'm taking the exact same code that's in the theme, just copying it. I'm just making sure I link everything. And I'm going to apply it. Oh, one thing I meant to mention real quick. So you have, I use bootstrap. So you don't need this bootstrap right here because it's already there. So you can actually remove that. I started with a bootstrap theme. If you're starting with blank, you're not going to want two bootstrap. It doesn't hurt to have two bootstrap style sheets in there. They'll override each other. And of course, you're not going to want two bootstrap scripts in there. But in this case, just remove it. Obviously, you don't need it because this actually starts with the bootstrap in there. And by the way, this little quirky thing that's happening here is because it's already being set. Just hit refresh. It should already be refreshing for you. And you'll see that it's in there. Your changes that you make after you hit apply. It's I'm having a theme conflict here. And that's another issue that I need to fix or at least address. But anything you hit apply here and you get the green check box, it's saving. Just hit refresh. For, it's almost preventing you from losing your saved over here. That's why I did it that way, but it is confusing. It should refresh and reload for you. But at any rate, you just saw that. Basically, I put that in there and changed it and then saved it. So if that becomes an issue with your import, you're just getting a conflict, just hit refresh. So the last part, you go down to the scripts. So again, this, you don't, you'll see this email decode. You don't need that. And again, you probably on your download, it's not even included. So if you're working off of the actual live version that you're seeing on ThemeForce, you almost want to do view source on your local version opposed to the one that you've seen online. In this case, I'm just doing it here. And then I'm going to throw this in here and I'm going to relink this up. So let me grab this and set that there. So I'm not exactly sure the errors that we're going to have or the issues. I'm hoping a lot of the stuff pops up that you experience. My luck, everything here will be perfect. So this bootstrap bumble, excuse me bundle here I can remove that's already included and go ahead and just delete and then hit apply again so it's there it's saved I need to look at what conflict is happening between these two on the bootstrap side of it but you'll see I just hit refresh and it's all there so obviously we don't want this code this is just a code that's in there I'm just using the bootstrap framework within here so now I need to grab my code that I need for the site itself and so there's a couple issues you're going to run into. One of the issues that you're going to have is that when this thing loads, think of all these images. So if there was no images here, what will happen is it will try to load our 404 page for every single one of those images that don't map. And so if you have a huge homepage that has a bunch of images, a bunch of everything that needs to be linked up, 
and you throw it in here, it'll spin for a long time because you got to think it's sitting there trying to find these files and these files don't exist. So 90% of your issues that you have when you throw this next step in is because you just went and grabbed the code first and didn't link up all your images. So in this case, I'm going to grab my footer all the way up to right before the body. So you're trying to get everything in between the body minus the scripts. So all the way up to here. So I'm going to grab this. And again, you can do this in Notepad. You can do this in the builder if you want. For instance, you could go line by line and do this. What I would do is I would throw this into Notepad. I'm going to cheat and use my code editor, but I'm going to throw it in here. And I am going to, one, I don't need this. I already need, no, I don't need this because I'm not doing email protection or whatever on this. Is it span? Whatever. I'll just keep that there and I'll just little personal things that I don't care about. Okay. So what you're looking for is that assets, just like we did um, for the CSS files and the JavaScript. You're looking for these image assets right here, right? So all these image assets, if you throw this in the code right now, it'll spin and spin until it figures out that these files don't exist. And finally, it'll either your browser or timeout or a show. And if there's not a whole lot of images missing four or five or a few icons and things like that, it'll load just fine. But if you have a bunch of them, it'll prevent you from actually loading. So what you're going to want to do is just grab this. I just look for anything that's assets forward slash and do control find or control replace. And then I'm going to grab my path here and go back and oops, I'm sorry. I want to replace that. So I want to replace everything that's assets forward slash with my relative path plus assets forward slash, right? So I'm going to hit replace all. And now we have everything that I need. I'm going to control copy and I'm going to go out to the builder and I'm going to click on this raw code editor tab right here. If you're familiar with the other system that's down here, it's the same thing. You just click on here. And of course I already have stuff in here from the template. I'm just going to delete all that and apply this and I'm going to hit apply. So this is going to reload and you'll see that nothing is loading. And the reason why nothing is loading is because I have a preloader here. And so I'm going to copy out that preloader. I hope this one has problems and it's not just perfect. Unfortunately, it's perfect. So that's that preloader. So if you know you've mapped everything and you put it in and you're not seeing it render in front of you, and you go out to the original theme and that there's a loader, the reason why that's happening is because the builder, I haven't found a good way to allow the loader, but edit the loader. So there's some loaders that like have loading with your logo and things like that. So any loaders, the document write that happens to actually render until it loads has been disabled because there's it's just, it's a lot of problems to get past that screen to allow you to edit it. So the best solution that I've come up with is one, if we built the theme, we're not going to have a loader in there. But if you're importing a theme that has a loader, there's a spot that you can put this loader in. And so I just, again, copy that code at the top. It's pretty easy. Most are going to say preloader or loader. And it's just a wrapper around that. Um, and the more of these you do, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's usually at the very top or at the very bottom. So in this case, I'm going to load this in the settings section. So let me go into settings and then I'm going to put this into the embed. And so what this, what happens here is this doesn't load onto the builder itself. It's going to load into the live site. So this won't affect your builder. This will give you that same functionality that you have and you don't have to worry about it messing up your site. Now you can see that all my fonts and colors are all messed up. That's because I cheated and did root CS in which I put that to the side. And so now what I have to do is I have to apply these styles above my CSS file. That way the root is loaded above that. So I'm gonna go back out to my template section. This is a step I don't wanna confuse you. It's not something you have to do. I just like putting it right here. 
and makes it easy for me to make changes to the root styles across the board. It's almost like the template section here, right? So this uses the bootstrap customization and I'm doing the same kind of concept just for myself. So I need to make sure it's above right there. So now it's there, I'm gonna hit apply. And there's my whole site. Now you can see that there's sections that are not showing like the images for the banner. So I'm just gonna hit refresh. Anytime you have something funky after you apply your assets or your styles or whatever and you save, just hit refresh so it reloads for you because all this stuff is rendering by JavaScript. All the stuff that's coming in, this was a too easy, this one was way too easy. That sucks. I was hoping it was gonna be really bad. All this stuff is here, everything is mapped. Sometimes you're gonna get sliders that have a background style. So anything that you have that's like inline CSS and I guess the best way of explaining it, if you've ever seen a style on a on HTML, it's style equals quotation marks with the actual the styles that you'd have. Our system converts that into an ID and puts it into an external style sheet that shows up when you click on there. For instance, if I click and then click on uh, this little tab right here, I'm seeing all my root here. But in addition to it, I have whatever styles that have been scraped off your inline. That becomes a problem if you have these sliders here that, for instance, I don't want to go too deep into the code side of it, but if you come into your slider and here we go, your slider. This one is controlled by data background. A lot of, some of them will be controlled by inline CS. And so that's removed from there. Those inline CS ones will actually not show up in the builder because it's been removed. And if you didn't put the actual relative path to it like this, it won't show up. So just make sure you have relative path. In addition to that, if it's not showing up, just simply click on the div and then go over to decorations, click on background image, and then apply your background image to, to whatever swap that you want to do to your image. So those are little things that where you're like, I cannot figure out why the background image on my banner is not showing up. Click on your banner, click on the div all the way around, go in here and add your background. Of course, you're gonna have to apply the no repeat and cover and the little settings here to make it look exactly the way you want it. But again, some of these images are not like this theme. Some of them are like inline CS. And so you may not show up for you. Another common problem is I want to change, let's say I want to change the color of this text, right? Or change whatever. I want to come into this text, change this text over here or whatever. When you come over to decorations, where am I? At? I'm sorry. They're all typography. Sorry. So you come over here and change this and this will probably change right away and be hard to explain after that. Yeah. So it's changing. Sometimes you're going to have classes, and I did a Facebook post, post about this on the dark side theme. When you click on a certain section and you want to change the color, there may be a class up here that's defining that style. Just delete the class, right? So every single right here, this section subtitle, if I deleted that, of course, that's going to remove all the styles there. And now I can apply whatever style I want. I can come over here and if I want my background color to be background plus, click on that. And I'm going to do color and I want it to be whatever. So now I can start redesigning that button how I want it or whatever section because I remove the class that's associated with the theme itself. That's going to give me control. So if you're ever making a change, this is the beauty of the new system. Post the old system, you just couldn't do anything unless you did important class. And so you'd have to go into the CS and add the important class because nothing on the right would work because there's classes that are overriding everything that you're doing within there in some cases, not in all cases. And so if you're ever working on a theme that you've imported and you're not able to make a change to the actual text color or the size or whatever, just remove some of these classes, right? So if I just remove that, it's gonna remove everything and it's going to be based on the theme's original code and not that class. And so now I can apply whatever the heck I want to make this anything I want it to be in addition to that. So that's a common problem is, hey, I can't change this. Also, there's issues with maybe your icon is not showing up throughout the site or whatever. Those types of issues that you have within the icons, you have 
maybe missing assets. So just make sure you have all your asset folders that are loaded. What else is a common problem? So the, a lot of those issues that I've seen over the last week are going to be 100% coming around to the fact that you clicked on either here and threw it in a post, it, even though this looks similar, this is just a section to, okay, I click here. I'm able to see what I'm actually editing within here, right? So this all changes and updates throughout here. This is like the live code editor. If you're familiar with that one in the past, this is a section where you're importing, you're putting in the top section that we talked about and the bottom section, the script section above the close of the body, and then the header section, the head section within here. And then the code right here, this is where you're dropping in. I've seen a lot, just copy the whole thing and drop it in here. So now you have the head up there. You have all your asset files up there. You have your JavaScript at the bottom. You're not going to want to do that. You're going to grab everything between the body. There's another issue too with some themes. So some themes will have the code. Let me just go out here. Some themes will have the body will have a bunch of classes on it. So there's an easy little trick to that. It would be extremely surprising to me if someone coded their CS theme to ensure that everything, all their classes started with body. Most, if not all, it's just a class name in this scenario. So if you have classes here, there's things that are not working properly. It's like one of the troubleshooting things you're gonna wanna do is you wanna look, is there a class associated with my body? And just give you a better understanding of the system. What we're doing is we're taking everything in between the body, saving that into a dynamic system within our platform, so load times are extremely fast, just the dynamicness of our platform. And then we rebuild that when it renders on your live website. And so we rebuild that in between the body. So if you have a body class, obviously you can't put body here because you'll see when you save, it'll strip out the body all, all together. Or you'll have two bodies in there, which is not good at all. And so what you're going to want to do is just simply grab, let's assume that, let's just say this was the class for the body. I would just take that class and whatever additional classes they have, and I would wrap all this with a div. Instead of having a body with that class, of course, I would go all the way to the bottom and close out that div. Now everything is wrapped with those classes because you have some themes that have the top level body class. Uh, WordPress does this a lot, where it will render all the styles for the entire system or entire page based on the body class. So in this case, you don't need a body class. You don't need the body to do the same thing. You can just wrap it with a div right there. I know that's probably a little more advanced, but again, if you don't know HTML and don't know CS, you could literally get on chat, chat GPT and have them explain, have whatever that thing is, explain what this is in a very short period of time. You can know HTML and CS just enough to be dangerous in this import process, because there's little things like that. You, again, it's, I don't want to make it believable that if you have no experience, never seen HTML code and never seen CSS, all of a sudden you're going to start building high-end themes or importing high-end themes from ThemeForce or wherever else. That's not the case. But just a little bit of knowledge, I'm telling you, you can troubleshoot a lot of these things the more you start working with them and understand what's going on. So again, a common problem, not common, sometimes a problem if there's body classes, that's how you'd solve that. Most of the time, if not all the time, you're, dump you're dumping in all the code from the view source right in here. That's not going to work because, again, we're going to parse out everything between the body. And all the other stuff actually gets left in. You'll just see there's no body or head inside your actual code there. And if it is, it's doubled up, and you don't want that. So all of this stuff that I put, you know, paste in here is in between, again, the body and the close of the body minus the scripts. So next would be... I guess the global blocks, this is probably going to be the, I would say the harder part about what you want to use with global blocks and how to reuse them for the next page. So in this case, I'm going to go, let me go back to let me close that. So obviously if I've edited my navigation, which if you haven't watched that, you know, this is rendering the navigation right in front of you. Some of these themes will have like mega menus. Some of these will have all different stuff in here. And if you watch that, video I'm talking about as far as if I clone this, right? It clones it all the way down. You're not going to want that. You would want to go back up one more and then clone it. Don't want that. Systems run a little slow here. 
go back up one more and clone it. Yeah, you're gonna have to go up. So this one is like theme up. Let me refresh here. Yeah, okay. So there is a lot in there. So I'm on the link. So you just keep going up to clone those, right? I think I did three. Nope, so it's two. One, two. Yeah, so my mouse movements are running really slow. John, your your system is synchronizing to OneDrive down at the bottom. If you look at it, just tell it to delay it for an hour or two. That's a good call. Good call. Okay, so yeah, my system's running a little slow. So in this case, I'm pushing the button too much and it's just being delayed here. Yeah, but you get the idea. You just go up one until you get to the next level. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my, my system here. You just do one. There we go, that should work. Oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing? I'm just blind here. The reason why that's happening, what's doing it right? This is too many in here, right? So contact us. You got too many. It's going down. Sorry, I didn't even see it actually duplicating over there. I do have a delay, by the way. It's driving me nuts on my mouse. But you'll see it's copying it over here. Go up that one layer if you're not ID, you know, the ideal copy. And you can edit your site directly through here, right? So everything that you're doing on your links and everything else. Another common problem is... I know Oren said this as well on Facebook. It's okay, my homepage is not linking back on my live site. That's because everything's relative path. So if you want your home to link, you're gonna to wanna to have forward slash, right? So forward slash is gonna take you right back to your home. All of our page structures are relative path. So in here, you have about, this would be forward slash about. And I know I did a video previously on where to find that. You actually find it in your page settings. You can override that and make it whatever you want, by the way. But if you just know, if I name this page about us, it would be about dash us with the space forward slash. And that way you have your links properly. But yeah, you have to go and build out your navigation. But let's say I created my navigation the way I want it. Let me just refresh so I don't have to go back. So now you have your navigation exactly the way you want it. So typically what I do is I'm going to build out my navigation. I'm going to build out my footer. So my footer is going to have all my links, all the pages I want, my form, whatever, everything in here. And then now I'm going to prepare for the interior page. So I have my home page done. I have my header and nav my navigation done and my footer done. And I'm going to start preparing for creating additional pages. This is where a lot, I guess, struggle with the global blocks. So within here, you're going to want to get this whole div. Now me, I wouldn't actually go in here and use this in here because I want to make sure that I have the whole thing. Like in that case, I'm pretty sure that's the whole thing. I like doing it at a code level. You're more, this works just the same way, but it's a lot faster and easier for me to come over to the code. I'll come back and do it this way. But if I come over here, I'm sorry, if I come over here to the raw code, and I know this is my header. Now there's some weird button here. I don't know what this is. I'm sure it's something to do with mobile. I'm gonna include it as my header. Typically your header is gonna be your header. So this is the format of our global blocks. You can use that icon, which I'll do in just a second to create a global block, but to do it on a code level. So if you're preparing your site or you're done and you wanna come in and create a global block, it's actually just div ID equals global. And then you dash whatever your name is. So whatever you name it. So when you use that icon after this, I'll show you that you're putting a name in. Basically what it's doing is doing exactly this. It's creating a div around all of this. And did I go too far? There it is. All it's doing is creating a div around it. And so when you save, this is actually creating a global block for the header that you're going to use for the entire interior sites. So the interior sites, now you'll see my global block showed up over here. When I start my interior site, I can drag this over as my home, my header, and then I can throw my code in and then drag my footer over if I want, or just use that as my template moving forward for my page when I copy it over. So I'm gonna go and do my footer, and actually I'll do the footer with the global block builder. So what's important about the global block Builder is you're going to want to get 
the whole div in here, right? The whole footer div. So now I have it. You don't want to do it right when I had it there because it's only going to take this part. It's not going to take the footer, the entire footer. And you're just going to click on the global block. I'm going to name it footer. Oops. And I'm going to hit add block. Now I'm going to save this. So nice not having to scroll up to save anymore. Okay, so now I save that and now I have my global footer, right? So if I go over to my code, you'll see if I go down, now I have my global footer right here. Now I could have gone up another one and put it up over here. Not a big deal if I'm copying straight from this template and using this as my next page. Not a big deal, but I do like mine wrapping around footer and not being inside footer. And so in that case, if I saw that happen, I would go up another one and apply that global footer to it. Anytime you've created multiple ones and you want to, again, like I said, the more you get familiar with just the idea of this little div, you can go into your spots that you want, even in this little section here and click on your div and then wrap it around here. You could just do it here too. So you know what section you're in. I guess that could have been a little bit easier if I would have came in here and then went up and kept going up until I saw the footer. And then I could have done it right there. So then I could have known where I was at, or I'm sorry, I know where I'm at now. Then I could have done it like that. Obviously, if you know you're doing it that way, you can put it wherever you want. So now I have my footer in my header block. Now I can create a new page. So there's a couple of ways. You can just clone this page if you want. Or you can, I know some ask about the nav group. So just to re touch on this again from the previous video, nav groups are just the way you organize your pages. It's also controls your page URL. So let's say you have services and you have roofing, remodeling, landscaping. You're going to, you may or may not want this. I would certainly want this, a services folder in your URL structure and then landscaping after it. That's just the way to do it. There's no actual page you're editing for the nav group. You can go in with a couple other override settings in the page settings section within the settings area to make changes to it. But all this is allowing you to group these. So in this case, I'm just going to do a blank template. You can clone from home. Actually, let's clone from home. And I'll just call this about us. And then create a page. So now I want to import the About Us page. Again, like I mentioned, highly recommend using the local version of your site and not the live one that's out here because sometimes these are different. I was hoping there was going to be some issues with this one, but there's not. So what I want to do is I want to pull in what's different from my head section. So this one looks, yeah, okay, there's the header, there's the header, okay. And I did wrap the button. So because I'm starting with global headers already, like my global blocks are already installed, I'm not wanting to grab all the code from the top of the body, the start of the body and the below the body. Now I don't want to grab all that stuff from the template because that will override my global, my global headers, right? So I just want to grab what's after my header and what I wrapped around, right? So starting here, is what I'm pasting in and on my footer. So there's my footer and then I wrapped it inside using a global. So I just know here is where I want to go. So I know I would need to copy everything above footer and everything that ends right here after header, div header, right? Cause I wrapped that with a global block. This div is not going to exist. So I'm just looking for header and footer. That's all I'm looking for. Everything in between header and footer. That's a better way of explaining it. So I'm going to grab all this all the way down until I see footer. And again, not all themes have footer and header actual attributes. They may have a div name footer or a div name header. In this case, this theme does and it's named footer. So this one's unfortunately an easy one. So of course, I'm not going to throw this all into that code editor, unless I'm going to go one by one and link all my individual folders. I'm not going to do that. 
I'm going to throw it into Notepad or throw it into something else and do Find and Replace, which is way easier. But you could do it one at a time if you wanted to do it as well. You can do Find and Search and find all of them and then change each one. But there's no Mass Replace, I don't believe, in the browser for you to do that. So in this case, I need to, oh, you know what? I could have also wrapped this, which is, I assume in this theme, there's somewhere you click on a button and a side navigation comes up. But in this case, I won't do it. Oh, did I copy all that? Main, footer, header top. Oh, see, simple mistake right there. I've been doing this for a long time. So I, this is not the close of the header, doofus. This is the start of the header. So you don't want that. This is the close of the header right here. So I want all this stuff. Sorry about that. I'm going to go all the way down to the start of the footer. Somewhere here. Oh, I passed it. Okay, right there. Sorry about that. And I'm going to throw this in here. So now I want to map up all my assets. So I want to do, am I, this has to be the side navigation. So there's a side off canvas. There we go. So you could wrap this with another global and have that part of the header or part, you could put this as the full part of the header, which I probably should have done in this case, because I want this to be on every single page. I didn't look too much into this thing. There's probably a little button that pulls a little side section like Ligna does and has all this other additional information. So in this case, I'm not going to do it, but you could then wrap this with part of your global header or create another global block just for this. That way it's just make a small change on that. Again, if it's in your header, it does the same thing. So let me go get my asset folder here. And I'm going to find and replace. I already have it up here. Nice. Okay. So now everything's in here. <clears throat> Again, like I said, even on the interior pages, if you throw this in and you have a bunch of missing files, it's going to take forever to load. And so now I need to do here. So I'm not replacing everything in here. I just want to replace what's in between my global header and global footer. Now there's another way of doing it, which I'll show you, but you still don't want to grab the header stuff. But you could start with the blank canvas and drag your global blocks over. So that's helpful. If you want to theme this up, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to theme this up and create a bunch of blocks yourself, obviously the goal is for you to make pretty blocks like this and make it easy for people to drag over because all these work in here, especially if you're using Bootstrap, right? So all that's going to work just fine inside your page. So now on my About Us page, and I have everything that I need in here working, but you could drag, you could start with a blank canvas, drag your global header over, then drop your code in, then grab the global footer. But same difference, same way, you're still copying what's in between your header and your footer. You don't want to grab all the code now because you've created a template for your header and footer. Now, if I'm on this page here and I'm like, eh, it's, my navigation is too crunched up here. I want to change this to about us. I mean, about instead of about us. So when I save this, I'm on the about page, right? So about page. Now, because I have a global block, I hit save. When I come back to my homepage, it's about, right? So now you've template, you made this into a template. Anything you change on the header or footer is going to change across every page that you have. Doesn't matter what page you're on when you make the change. And now you have full control of making those individual blocks into additional templates that you can use and leverage like a CTA, right? You may have this testimonial or testimonial section. You may like this block here. Let's see here. Ah, there's a testimonial block somewhere on here. I may want to have it on every single page at the footer. I may want to use this as my CTA on every single section of below the fold. What I don't like doing is grouping all that into a standard footer that has three content blocks. And the reason why is you'll eventually come to a page, you're like, Man, I really don't want all three of these on here. And so that becomes a problem if you have it as one global block. But if you make them all individual global blocks, then you can rearrange them, right? So if this was all, if this whole entire section was a global block, on certain pages, you may want to go up, move up your Oh, what am I doing? I'm going up a, a drag your whole thing up to another section within here or use the 
layers manager and drag it that way, right? So moving it up above that to wherever you want. Oops. If you would just want to move those up and down, you could do that, right? And it's a global block. So on this particular page, I have this in a totally different section within my page. So that's another way of using the global blocks and here's a testimonial section. So <clears throat> another step to prepping your themes for blogs and I guess just overall the forms. So you have a problem with the style. If you're not familiar with CSS and like doing the styles, there's a couple of things that are going to make it easier for you to actually activate this blog. Obviously in this blog here, I do not have the ability to swap out my blog post to this exact look and feel because there, this is not prepped. You can prep it by wrapping some divs around it, or you can come over here just like we did with the global blocks. Or you can come over here to the widget for blogs and you can drag that over. So now you're using this set and I'm, let me refresh that. Let me drag it over to the right div. So that's an example if you're not dra dragging it over to the right element. So now I have my blog widget. However, you're like, oh, I really like the look of this blog. Why can't I have it look, you know, this blog feed, why can't I have it look like that? That's where it comes into the more advanced user. You're going to need to design some styles to leverage our own blog logic for the divs and that we have to match this. We do it all the time, but again, that's certainly advanced user, but this little widget here will work with this specific theme all day long, right? Because it's going to conform to at least the fonts and the, and the responsiveness here. So it looks okay. Again, it's a, it's an issue if it's not styled. Same thing with the forms. It's going to use a standard form styling. So if you want it to look like the form that's on your theme, you are going to need to apply the CSS. And like I said, you don't have to do that. You could just come in here and do it if you want. You just have to design it the way the theme is in here. If you want the theme to work exactly the same way, for instance, here, this little div, this has blog content. So this is a, a little way of doing it. Yeah, blog content as the class. You can come in here to this little blog content here and add blog content as the class. Oops, I misspelled it. Let me make sure it's with this it's underscore. Is that two underscores? Yeah. So you can grab some of the classes as well and apply it to your, and that really didn't do much because ours looks very similar within here. And of course you can make sure you have those classes applied throughout. You can reuse these classes on any section within here, right? So if you want to keep some of the styles that they have for new stuff that you build in here, that's how you would do it. Let's see icons. So this particular theme, I'm not sure what they're using for their icons. So let me just go look real quick. So some of these themes, so this is a good one that actually is a problem because I wonder if this is even picking up the classes. Section, our service box. Okay, yeah. So they're basically, and I can confirm that, these are being brought in by the actual, no, that's just a color icon top. So this one is, oh, so it is. Okay. All right, cool. So it's using font, font awesome. So this is actually even easier. So get out of here. So this span, you're, you're going to want to come in here and for whatever reason, it's not picking up. Yeah, it is. There it is. So I'm not clicking on the icon enough. I'm not getting into the icon in here. I'm not sure why I can't reach it, but there's an icon in there that's wrapped around that span. And I'm not sure why it should be. However, this goes back into why the layer thing is pretty awesome. You can come in here and now click on it. And I'm going to select it in here. So I'm selected. This is font awesome. So these classes, FA user friends, you just go out to font awesome and you can grab these fonts that are here and, or icons, I'm sorry. All right. And let's say I want the house. You would just, this is FA users friend. This would just be FA house. So now I have that icon. So I'm switching that out. 
This one's a little tricky because there's just something preventing us from accessing the little icon here when I click on it. And it's probably this overlay that's happening here. And I, I still have this delay going on my computer. It's annoying. But like I said, if you're like not seeing it, you're not seeing any classes here, but you're seeing icon, you're seeing span, it's because you're not selected on it. So you're going to want to click on the layers and just go down one more. Now I'm on here and I can click on my style manager and I see the style is FA car. I can change this to FA phone and pretty much all of font awesome is FA dash and you can get right. So if I click on here, it'll show you FA house, right? FA solid FA house. You just easily change out that. And again, would be cool if I had every font out there that would match with every theme and make it simple to where you can just hit the little drop down for fonts, which I'm definitely going to do. In the meantime, depending on your theme, you may have feather icons, you may have font awesome, you may have, there's tons of them. Just find out what the theme is using, which in most cases they tell you on the theme, maybe not on this one, but anyway, you, if you need help finding it, it's pretty easy to find out what kind of fonts you're using on here. Some use EG, right? And you won't be able to get away with that. You're gonna have to replace it with the image. And in this case, maybe I do want to replace this with an image inside that section. And so I could delete that. And then I could come over to my image section and I can drag that over into a little box there. And then of course I wouldn't use that, but now I have my little image in there, right? So there's ways to do that, to replace icons. If you don't know the icon set and you're not comfortable of going in. And again, like this one's a little funky and weird why I'm not able to pick up the icon here when you scroll over, but it has probably has to do with this stuff that's going on there. Point is, if you can't find it, you can go into your layer and find it and make the change within here. So what else? It's just, there's been, what is there a couple of other problems that I'm missing that people have come across with? Oh, background images. So sometimes your background image will not, for instance, in this div decorations, I go down here to background, see how it's not showing up as a background, when you click on background image and then click on image and then click on images, let me see if I have any images I can use here. I'm definitely not gonna use my picture. Let's see here and just grab that. So this right here, it's not showing, right? Cause this is team member item. There's a little thing there. What else would be a problem here? So this is like part of your theme, excuse me, theme prep to make it easy for somebody else to come in here and use. Sometimes these little background images, I can look further on the code. Um, let me go back. That you're not in the right layer when you're applying it. And so this layer here. Theme thumb. So it's on theme thumb. Okay, so it is an image. So it's on theme thumb. So that actually is pretty easy here. I just double click on image. It's not a background. That is a terrible example, right? So of course you would put an image behind it, an image that would actually work with white background. So that's a bad example because that one's pretty easy. It's just an image within here that you're actually clicking on to change out within here opposed to a background. Let me see, this is image, image. I'm trying to find one that has a background for the div. Those are all images. You can see how it goes to image, right? So you, again, use the up tool to get to your image if you're in that scenario. So this one is actually a really good theme, easy to work with when you're in this builder. Should have picked that one worse than this. Yeah, nothing background, all that. Okay. So yeah, a lot of times you'll have an issue where you're like, hey, this is a background image and I'm not seeing it here. Doesn't matter. Just hit the image button. Get it, get your image for the background. If it doesn't show, it's likely because there's a class that's overriding it. Just delete the class and your image will show up. So that's probably pretty hard to know without knowing. And so hopefully I kind of cleared it up is get familiar with these classes up here. If you're importing your own theme, of course, the whole goal of this is to build a theme to where the next person who uses that theme that you've built doesn't have to do any of this stuff. So there's a lot of little things that you want to do just to make it easier for whoever's going to be working on this next. If your goal is to go after the range of users who are going to be editing their website from someone who just can barely write an email to somebody who's worked with drag and drop builders before. So those, that, that range is how you're going to prep this site. That's where I'll go into the next part of this, that it all depends on who you're building this for. 
if you're building this for your designers to start from something that, hey, look, I'm only servicing four or five different industries. Let's go pick out some really awesome themes or build really awesome themes or whatever. Let's put them in here and put them as our starting point. So my designers can start from this inside a client's account, start customizing it very quickly, override whatever CS I want to override for the site. And that's my purpose of this. Then all this additional prep and stuff is really not necessary. Literally putting it in like this and making sure everything is loading and working, your designers can take it from there. If the next layer is, okay, I want somebody to be able to come in and pick out one of these themes and build on top of it or customize it and be able to use every element in here properly, then there's a little bit of a prep that you need to do. You need to make sure like... The classes are removed from your image backgrounds, like I mentioned. When you click on this individual font area and it doesn't change by color and it's a class, remove that. So there's little things you need to prep, additional designs for your data form, things like that. And then, so now you have a theme that someone can start with that's just anybody who's familiar with drag and drop systems that the theme has been prepped for them and there's at least more control for them to make changes and, and do all that other stuff. The other user, which I'm going to explain, is they're not going to do any of this stuff. They're not familiar with drag and drop, drag and drop stuff. They just want a cool website that they can make some changes like the about us text. Great example is agent based organizations, franchises. Maybe you want to make it where the franchise can only edit certain sections. And then of course they could, if they wanted to come in here and do this stuff. And so that next part lot, I guess, miss the point of the tags. So the tags are rendering on the front end when you load your site, I meant to mention this. What I like to do, again, this is a way better than the previous one as far as previewing and working with it and seeing what it's supposed to look like, especially on the responsiveness side of it within here. But I like to throw a preview domain on it. So I know many have asked this and I've said I was going to do it. And it just seems like I say a lot of things and don't do a lot of things. But when you come in here, you're going to come into the branding. I like throwing a subdomain. So if you have your private domain for the system white labeled, you have unlimited subdomains because you set up that wildcard DNS. So you can add app, preview one, client's name, whatever. So I like to put a subdomain on it just because when we throw it to a client, they can see it, it has their name on it, and it, they can see it evolve. And so in this case, I'm going to use Ligna. And unfortunately, this is not an account associated with Ligna. So I have to do it on the back end because I will get an error. But you would just type in your URL there, which I'm show you what it looks like there. Yeah, John, you can use the LA computer one. It's an experimental site that I've been working on, but there's nothing in it. Yeah. So I'm going to move to that in just a second. I know I've talked too much and we're already over three. Absolutely. So here, I just threw this on. Oh, you meant the domain. I see what you mean. So that's a problem that you're going to have, by the way, your domain cannot be used outside your parent account on other systems. So if you type in that domain, you're going to get an error. It's so no one steals your domains and uses it for their own purpose. So it, do, it does by root domain, by the way. So you won't be able to use Ligna.io across your system because it's set just like I can't use Ligna.io. I had to do it on the back end for this. So here's the site. I have my preview. It's loading up in this case. So when you come back to tags, so on tags, there's all these different tags that you can use that are pre-built into the system. These tags are used for if somebody, you wanna give them control to design the website, you want them to, or customize the website, but they're just gonna put their information in here and it's gonna brand the site for them, right on the site level. And then we have tags that are profile tags. And then we also have personalization tag or whatever additional tags you wanna build. And so these tags, a lot put in. So for instance, if I wanna put company name in here, go to the builder. And I put, let's just say, whatever life takes you, I'll just put, that doesn't make any sense, but I'll put that there and I hit save. So many ask, hey, I have the tag in, I have the company name on the site. Why doesn't it show up in the builder? So the reason why it doesn't show up in the builder is that obviously you're not going to want, and this is the second thing there, that's why it disappeared. You're not going to want it rendering the company name because that means everybody's company name is going to render across that base template. So in this scenario, your company name will render on the site external site. And obviously it's not showing. That's because I don't have the company name filled out. So even if I fill it out here, it's not going to show in the builder, but it will show out there on your live site. 
So if you've just been working in the builder and never put a domain on, I suggest, again, using your private label domain and then leverage subdomains across the entire system. So you'll see that tag is showing up on the my company. Same works for all those tags, any tags that you use on there. And so most of the tags here, yeah, this, you're not going to use any of that. The logo. So this is, this is helpful again, if you're like in this case, logo image. So what I would do here, so this prints the actual source. So it's not going to print the image attribute that you would see. So that's where it comes back to prepping these themes and understand what, what you're really doing with these tags. All this is going to print is the path to that logo. So you have to change out this path here with this tag. So you don't want to remove the, you don't want to delete this and throw your tag in there for the profile image or the logo. So I'm using the logo tag. So you're not going to want to delete this and throw your tag in there. You're going to want to replace this with the tag. And so apply that. It's going to show up blank because we're in the template. So the template's blank. There's no image source there. However, if I were to come out to my logo and load in that and I hit refresh, that's using, oops, where am I at? Did I replace that? What's going on here? Yeah, so I didn't save it. This is what amateurs do with my own system. I applied it. <clears throat> okay. This goes back to my previous video. So there's certain sections in here you can apply and it automatically saves for you no matter what. I know that's confusing. I said it on the last video and I don't even do it myself. Just always hit save. How about that? That's the easiest way of understanding the system. Just always hit save. So I applied it. It was looking fine in here. It's fine, but it didn't save out there when I went to it. So I'm going to hit save now. And so now my logo is there. It's not there, but it's there. So if I go out to here, there's my logo. So now me as a user who comes in, I've subscribed to a repository of themes or I bought a, spe a special theme for my website. I'm paying a monthly subscription for CRM or whatever. And I want control of editing my website, but I don't necessarily want to access the builder. I can just apply my logo in my settings and there's that level. There's scenarios where you don't want the client even accessing the site and messing it up or doing anything with it. Or you have a user that just quite frankly is not going to get the ability to build on top of this. So you can actually create all your own tags. So you can have all this in here and they can do it at a site level. So all they have to do is come in here to their funnels, go into their funnel settings, and then apply all this stuff here. But you can also use the profile tags. And so I'll jump over there in just a second. These customized funnel tags like this about us. So if I were to take this tag and come in here to the about page. And let's say I want this section of the content block. And let's just say I want this section here. So I can throw this tag in here and I can save it. Oops. And of course there's not gonna be any content in it because I don't have anything in it. And plus I'm inside the builder. All I see is the tag. Where the heck am I up? Okay, right there. So I can come in here and just say, you're a great company. All right. Save that. Now, if I go out to the site, then link the navigation. So I have to about, is it about us or about, I don't remember what I called it. About us. So now when I come out to the about section, we are a great company, right? So these tags, I created this tag personalization. This is all custom. This isn't. These are the only tabs in here unless I create custom tags here. So all these tags, I have the standard ones that I can use. I have my branding one that I can use. If you're going to do Legion networks and you need to have the specific domain that you're on, you can use the domain tag, which will pull in here specifically for that. So there's a lot of different usage you can use with that domain tag. Also the, nothing on that social. So if you want to use all these pre-built ones in here for your links, things like that, you can apply those. So the User only has to go in and apply it here at a site level. Uh, don't need to worry about embed as far as tags there. But these personalization tags or whatever you want to call it, 
you're going to go to templates, you're going to go to data, and you're going to go to data fields. And so inside here, you're going to create, let's just call this a CTA section. And I'm going to choose it on funnels. And I'm going to choose a type as text area. Where am I? Text area. I'm not going to apply a workspace. I'm going to hit add. And this is where you come in and say, okay, I want these roles to have access to it if you want. That way it's only certain roles that have access to this specific option. So now when I'm inside here, oh, one last step, you got to apply a group. So in this case, I'll apply it to the personalization or I can create a new group. And in this case, now I have my new CTA section. So it's call us, we rock. So now I can grab this little tag that's associated with it. And I can come over here to this and I can replace this little CTA section. Hit save. Now out on the about us page, where am I at? I hit refresh and call us, we rock. So now each individual user that re you replicate this site for has these little sections. And again, these are, you could apply, I can whatever bold, put a size. There's CS styles in here. So I don't know how much you'll be able to override in here. So a lot of the sections you want to put in, you want to put them in whatever a little section, but it's within the design of the site. You can do whatever you want and then just have, they can apply additional stuff. They can add as much content in that section that you want them to edit. So it makes it really easy for even the ones who just simply cannot do a drag and drop or double click on something and make a change. And not that they can't, it's just so much easier and give them the ability to come in here and even in their profile. So again, you can create as many groups over here to make it very simple to understand what they're editing. You can name each section. So it makes it easy for them to understand what they're editing. And this is at site level. So every site that you replicate from here on out is done by that user who goes into the site level. Now, if you want to prevent them from even having to go to the look funnel section and click on their site, you can do it in the profile section within their profile. And so to do that, same place, I'm gonna go back out to data fields. So here you're gonna create, let's just call it anything profile. Choose type is going to be user, <clears throat> excuse me, user info. And I'm gonna make this also a text area and hit add. And so now when you go into your profile, oh, let me go in here real quick. Now you need to group it. I'm gonna group it to, let's do it on sample this time. And oh, of course you can also apply an icon, change up that icon so it actually matches to that. So inside my profile, I have sample. Now I have anything profile. So I do need to publish these tags here, like I do in the funnel section. It's just CP. So custom profile tags are profile tags. So all these profile tags are basically P company name, P address with the curly brackets open. So that's the same one. So you can use these tags. I need to apply them here and like I do on the funnel section, make it easier. Plus I need to publish the global tag documentation for everything. But in this case, I want this tag and I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna go out to here and I'm just gonna replace this with CP and I'm gonna save that. And so now in my profile, which obviously if I come out here to the main site, there's nothing on there here now. Oh, anything profile, did I have that right? I have to get the right tag. I can't even remember my own tags. At any rate, that's the concept. So I'll send out after this call, especially since this meeting, since I'm giving all the tags, CP or CC, at any rate, doesn't matter. That's it works the same way as the funnels. You have a profile tag that you have the name. It's the exact name with the actual tag. And I will send, send those out, but that's how you would make it inside your profile. Like everything here that you do the user would come in and set up the profile. So when you set up your workflow to automate for a user role to actually build this website out for them on demand, which you would go in here to workflows and create that use, create user new workflow and then assign that funnel that would build that. And then they can go on their profile and make the changes and make it really simple. But again, on the site level, same thing. They would just come into the site and actually make the changes on the tags. But everything on the tag that's rendered is rendered on the front end of the site on a hosted domain, not in the builder. None of these tags work inside the builder.
Okay, so I'm going to jump over to all the questions over here, and I hope I cover pretty much everything that I've experienced over the last two weeks. I know using live examples, but I try to touch on everything that we actually had within there. I was hoping this theme was just going to be a mess, but it's actually really good. Matter of fact, if you, anybody wants this theme, I can just send out, like I said, just grab this and the code. I'll put it in a different document and play with it. This is a really good thing. I really like it. Okay. So let me try to backtrack here. WordPress is not available. Again, I'm not discouraging you from importing WordPress. We unfortunately do it as part of our done for you setups and it's a pain in the ass. It's a real pain in the ass a lot of times because of all the plugins and all the other stuff. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying there's way better options and faster ways of doing it. If you already have a WordPress site and you have no experience installing these themes, you are going to want to either have somebody else do it or wait for our importer process that we're doing for like I said, click funnels, high level and uh, WordPress. So that is coming in the works, but won't be as robust as this, by the way, it's really going to be conformed to what you have today, opposed to having full control of what you got here. Yes. Yeah, so part of the WordPress XML. So the thing about where WordPress is XML that you export, all that is, is your data from the database links to your assets that are actually the hosted assets that are in there. You still have to go into WordPress and install your theme, right? For it to work, you're still going to need those assets. And so, yes, you will have to, you will need both. You will need all your assets for your theme and you'll need the actual uh, XML. So yes, that is coming for that side of it. So Richard, let me go out and I'll just pull your site up right now. I think you said you had a 404. Yeah, because you don't have it on the site itself. I can jump in here at the end. I'll go through all this stuff and then we can go in specifically for what you had. I assume this is in your main account. I think it's a separate one. I'd have to double check. It's just one that I started working on and throwing stuff in and I got busy. But no you no worries. That. I'm happy at the end of this to go through that and actually work with that one live for you within here. So if you can figure out what account that's in and just let me know and I'll jump in there here in, here in just a minute. I put so, my main down in the chat pri private note already. Okay, perfect. So do we have to modify the path to different HTML pages? So no. You, yeah. So you basically are going to use the relative path that we have for the navigation. So in this case, you know, this isn't a link page, but this one is right. And services. Yeah. So this is service details. So all these HTML pages, they won't work in our system at all that way. And it's the name of the page. Like I said, I named it about us. You can get the, if you click on this little settings icon, you can get the page URL here, excuse me, URL here, and you can override it too. So I can make this just about, but I want the name to be about us or whatever. The only thing you're missing from here is a forward slash at the front and the end, just to make a relative path. So inside the builder, when you click on your page, and let me just link up the about page, click on here. And so I'm on the about, this is about.html. You're not going to want that. You're going to, that won't work. You're going to want about us space dash and then forward slash, just like the way it is in the settings, but with the forward slash here. Forward slash is your relative path to just think about the hierarchy of your folder. So in this case, my about us, right? So here's the folder. If I took this away, that's your homepage. It's, it redirects without it on there, but it's there. And so now I'm linked up about us all the way throughout, right? What's cool is now, obviously that's not linking. That's not going to work for my home. So I got to click on my home, click on my settings, change that to forward slash. I think there was, is that forward slash? Yep. And then hit save. And so now all my pages are linked up because I'm using my global tag through there. So all relative path, name of the page. You can get it inside the settings to get the actual URL it's created. It's very simple. All we do is convert spaces into dashes. Everything's lowercase. Add the forward slash at the front and the end and everything will link for you properly. So hopefully the homepage linking is just forward slash. Again, click there, forward slash, and you are good to go to make the homepage link. You can, again, your logos too, right? So here in your logo. So this where it comes out into how do I link this image or I want my logo to be linkable. So the way a lot of these builders work, wrapping, and if you're familiar with the old system, it's actually kind of difficult in some regards. So in this case, I'm going to do a link block. I'm going to put that, I guess that's in the same section. You got to find the right section. So now I have the link there. So let me go back. 
this one, this one's a little, is there a div there? Okay, yeah, I want to go into this div. So I want to go in there and then I want to grab my logo and put my logo in there. So now my logo is linked and I can go up one and then now I can make my logo. And what's funny is it actually already had it in there and I didn't even see it. So this theme is even easier than I thought because they already have a wrapper for the link on the image. So when you click on your image, you go up one, now you're on the link forward slash. Okay, so I've mapped my domain to the DNS settings and my hosting. I have one issue. Once I log in to too many app.website.com link, whenever I go to my main website, website.com, it brings me back to the app.login page. Why is this happening? Is there a bug? Your help is appreciated. So what's happening, once I log in to app.website.com, or go to website.com, it brings me back to app.com. So DNS, if you are not pointing you may have a redirect that you have in your DNS. If your DNS is 100% the way you have it right now, make sure that your branding settings is set to app.yourdomainwebsite.com. That's the only way it would be redirecting. All right, unless our site, unless you like set up a redirect on the back end for us, like you, we can set a redirect for you. Unless that's set up, you wouldn't have your main domain redirecting you to a subdomain. So most of the time, it's the DNS configuration wrong. Unfortunately, I'm an expert in DNS and I hate being an expert in DNS because obviously I feel everyone's pain, how confusing it can get, especially when you have proxies and not proxies. Jump on chat for that specific example. And I'll get, give me a screenshot of your DNS and I will 100% point you in the right direction for that. But there's no way our system would redirect the main URL to your login URL. It would be reverse. Your login URL could be on a main site and I've seen that before where you accidentally put the app.domain.com as one of your websites. And now you can't access the backend portal because without typing in admin.php, because our system, it allows you to use your branding URL and a website with the same URL. You just have to hard link the admin section. So yeah, get on chat and give me a, a screenshot of your DNS. For data forms embedding on internal websites, do we use the external embed script or internal embed? That's a great question. That's I that happens a lot. So what is that being asked? Is how do I embed a data form onto this site? So one thing that I would do first off is I would just use the drag and drop. The embed code was for be prior to all this stuff. So I would just grab my data form and drag it over. And then now I have a data form that I can come over and select that and change out whatever I want. So that's what I would, for data forms, I wouldn't worry about using the embed tag. And just so everyone understands what there's, why this is confusing is prior to this, when you build your own themes, you would use this right here. You would come in and you would copy this. And you would go find the place that you would have. And even back, it seems like a long time ago, it was just a few weeks ago. You would click on, you couldn't even click on where you wanted it to go and then click on the code editor and put it where you want it. But you would embed it that way. You would come into the raw code editor and you'd find where you want it to go and you would drop that code. And I'm going to try to find the tag because it's here somewhere. Oh, you know what? I didn't save it. Let me save this real quick. So there's my form, let me go over here. So there's, what's also cool too, when you use Bootstrap, we already have the designs for your data forms and stuff already in there. It's great. So here it is. So you'll see that prior to this new CMS, you had to wrap your stuff with your divs, with data forms, so it would pick it up, or you would come and drop this in here for this tag. You don't have to do that anymore. Matter of fact, this is, this should be phased out. You don't need this anymore. You should always use the, unless you're just doing everything in code view and you're not doing any of that stuff and you just want to apply, just grab, this is what you grab. You grab that tag right here and you put it wherever you want. You'll see in the code level, you're like, what the heck? I'm seeing visually the form, but in my code, it's this. That's because we made it simple and we visually render it for you. So you're not like, oh, it's a tag for my form. What does my form look like? So it's all visually rendering for you, which is obviously really cool. So the tag itself, you don't need to worry about that. Like I said, I would drag it over for whatever theme 
and do that. If you're in hundred percent coding all locally and you know, you just want to prep it, then use that tag. So I guess that would be a useful, don't ever use this by the way, don't ever use this inside the builder. This is for external. It'll break, it'll save, it'll create. That's another thing I see problems with, with anyone using the system is they'll throw this in there. And what's happening is this document creating this form every single time you save. And so when you look at your code, there's like hundreds, if you've been saving it hundreds of time, you don't want this. This is not designed for this system at all. This is only for external. You do not want to use that on internal. Use this data forms widget now or the tag if you're still using that. So you just have to use the script that Ligna provides in the external embed script and that for website Ligna. Bro. Yeah. So I wouldn't do it there. Like I said, I would only use this for internal websites. For external websites, absolutely can only in this one. No problem, Lisa. I'll check that. No, I owe you a response for sure. I have been absolutely slammed. So you have a complex one, so that's great. I'm happy, again, if you're just completely stuck, get with me and I'll walk you through. In most cases, even the one I did yesterday, I forget who that was for. He was just so close. It was ridiculous. Just one little section move. And it was a beautiful theme. I actually loved it. So if we import the WordPress files or XML, so how do you have a demo? With... Okay, so with WordPress, it works the same way. The only thing that's going to throw you off, the only thing that's going to throw you off is it's not gonna look like this. Anybody have a WordPress domain I can look at and show you what it's gonna look like? If you have a WordPress domain, feel free to throw it in here and I'll go ahead and do view source and just give you some pointers with it. Okay, so WordPress, so this is beautiful, simple. This is what you're looking at, right? So there is, here's the head, close of the head. So you have all of this to figure out what you need and what you don't need. Now, this one's not that bad. This one's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. So in this case, I'll just slice this one up real quick. This one's actually not that bad. And plus all the domains hosting. Of course, if you change your domain, if you do it this way, just want to point out, if you do it this way and you change your domain, none of these files are going to work because I didn't host them. I didn't download you. Most of your problem is going to be getting your assets. Uh, let me do blank. Most of your problem is going to be getting your assets and knowing where your assets are at and getting them over and map properly. That's most of your issues. In this example, because, oh, where the heck am I at? This example is not that bad. So in this case, so you don't need any of this stuff, all this title, meta, all this stuff. You don't need any of this stuff. Now you can add it if you want, but we do the Twitter, we do the OG properties. You don't need this article published stuff. If you want to put in your, we do conical robot wise is the standard one, but if you want to apply additional one, you can don't need the DNS fetch stuff. Don't need the feed. This little Divi stuff here. This is built on Divi, which, <clears throat> yeah, I'll refrain from saying about what is injected in here. All that stuff, you're going to need that. This is all your stuff that you built on your Divi, the style part, style here. So you're gonna need that. You have your style sheets, you definitely gonna need that. You have your global styles inline CSS, so you're gonna need that. Your breadcrumb CSS, Font Awesome, Divi Open. Yep, you're gonna need that. Here's all your inline styles, so you're gonna need that. CSS, 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 you're gonna need a Jetpack. I don't know what you're using for that. It's part of your plugins, definitely gonna need that. You don't need any of this stuff here. Don't need that. Don't need any XML stuff. Definitely are not going to want to bring over our pixel. But that's another thing. You don't want to ever install the pixel either to an internal website. That will cause a lot of problems for you. Not only your tracking for double tracking purposes, but in addition, your data forms won't work either. What else? So that's pretty, and this one's not that bad. This one is actually okay. So I'm going to grab this all the way up. So here, oops, not the method, the style. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to come over here to my templates tab. I'm going to throw this in the head. I'm going to hit apply. So you can see how it's saved here. And the one that we had, I had a conflict there. So I got to figure out the conflict between bootstrap and that specific theme. But like I said, if you save, hit apply in this section and it disappears, but you got the green block box, 100% save, just hit refresh. It means your theme is having some sort of conflict with, and I should just be refreshing it anyways. It's, I don't even know why I'm doing it that way. Where am I at? 
Okay. I swear I was just on something here. Oh, I moved it over to make it easier so I could find it the next time. Okay, so there, that's all I needed there. Let's see here. This is for your video pop-up. So you're definitely going to probably need that. Your icon, let's see, your style. So it's another style. So you need that. And it'd be easier if I go all the way over here. This. So this is where it comes into some of these will cause a little bit of a problem for you because it does. it's going to onload rendering based on your page which I do not like. And so I'm going to put this in here. You hit refresh. Okay, so this actually is a little bit of a problem. And the reason why is because there's just so much code that this little section here is not going to fit all that, especially on a render inside. So in addition to that, you have errors. So this is where it comes back to slightly an issue of prepping here that I would do. Give me an idea. Somewhere in here, in this section, you have CSS errors. So what I would do is I would take all your inline and I would throw it on its individual file and I would upload those. So all this between here, right, style here, this inline style that's not part of a file, you can go throw that on a file, save it as CS, and then load it up in the asset manager and use that as you linking side of it because you're going to have errors thrown in. It's just so much code. It's a ridiculous amount of code. Plus you have it down here as well. Just unbelievable amount of code. You don't ever want that much code loading that way. You want to always have that on a file. That's no bueno at all. So you could, again, like I said, it's not as bad as some of these that you have with WordPress. It's not crazy. And just the hosting of the file. So I could import it that way, right? If you know what you're doing with that, because you got to wrap the tags around it. But just for this little site, that's a significant amount of code that's in there. So WordPress tips, I would go and grab all your Elementor, your Divi CS that's being injected in this section right here. And I would, in between the style, I would save it into a file, name it with a CS file extension, then load it up because you're going to have difficulties trying to put that much code in that section, especially if you have errors. So I do want to say this, our CS stuff will format your CSS. You saw how I threw it in that way and then it formatted it for us. That is awesome, but it's bad if you have errors. So in this case, there's just error you know, within here that just preventing something in here. So again, if you ever come across this where you came in and it's just tons, it's trying to format it and all the different lines, you're going to want to throw that into a file. There's just too much CSS that you're going to be putting into that head section. I actually like that because it will tell you, hey, you just, you're making load times terrible and your conversion, obviously your rankings are going to hurt from your load times and things like that. So anyway, for this particular site, like I said, there's not too many things that you have to not include. It's okay. It's not as bad, but you do have a problem with all these styles here. You're going to want to put them in your own individual files. And then at the bottom, yeah. So all your Divi themes files here, There, this is where it comes into like this, right? So a lot of this stuff that shows up at the bottom is actually for when you're logged in. So you don't need this extra stuff that Divi injects. You can actually not include that. You're going to need that. And then also the animation here, this is for your slider, I assume. And then this is, you don't need this as analytic stuff. That's uh, actually, what is that for? That's for Divi. Yeah. So you won't need this. This is again, helping you with editing your site on WordPress. So that's another, again, you have code in here that's useless. That's doesn't do anything for the fact that the visitors come to your website. This is not for them. This is for when you're logged in. Yeah. So I hope that helps. John, I have a question about the branding. When I put the app.resac.com it and put the update, the DNS records, it was working fine. And then suddenly my main website wasn't able to open and it was keep taking the redirecting to app. Resac.com. So it's like something before it was like working fine with the performance and everything. And now if you open it, sometime it is as you open it, it's opening fine, but sometime it just go to the old app.resac.com. 
Yeah, so what you're experiencing is DNS cache. So in most cases, when you change your DNS, it's going to be pretty instant, right? So when you change your DNS, you don't have to wait too long for you to be able to install SSL and be able to use a subdomain approach to it. But a lot of times you'll experience DNS cache where you're experiencing it one way, but other people are experiencing it totally different. And I, again, I hate being an expert in DNS and I know people don't want to hear that, but that's exactly what's happening. And so what you need to do in that scenario is that you either, if you look at our instructions for the records, that's basically written as if you're using GoDaddy. If you're using another provider, Cloudflare, all these other providers, their naming conventions are different. The host name is different than the value. The at symbol is actually the domain name, things like that. So in some cases you may apply the at symbol or the domain name, not realizing that, or the way they have it set up, that's actually sending all the traffic from your main domain over. Oftentimes people overlook that www has to be set. That's a subdomain set in the right direction to get the www, especially if you're using our redirects for www. So if you put in that DNS, I can pinpoint exactly what's going on. Screenshot your entire DNS so I can see if there's additional records or things that are happening there. But yeah, you had some sort of traffic being sent from the main domain. So for a little while, you're able to see your domain and then it propagated and it's redirected to app. And then you probably reset that change. And so for a while it was working and not working and back and forth. And now like when I go to it, it pulls up the site. And when I go to app for your branding URL, it's working fine on this side. So I don't know if you're using www, if that's your issue, but again, if you're experiencing some sort of, sometimes it works, it's not. As long as I can confirm your DNS is good. Yeah, you have a redirect on www. And when I pull up your admin portal, works great for me. Yeah, so. I am going to send you the... Yeah, exactly. See, when you put the... Did you put the app yeah. as it? Or just, okay. Yep. So, and then when so, I go to your main domain. So you may be just perfect and you're just experiencing DNS cache. Um, yeah, because, this is exactly what happened from last two yeah. days. And I'm like a little bit thinking what is happening, what I did wrong, because see, sometimes it's working perfectly fine. My website, every page is working. Then uh, again, if I am putting Krasak, it's bringing me to the other branding page, the one which app, yeah, it's yeah. bringing me here. Yeah, so you're probably experiencing DNS cache for sure. Maybe W, and I just checked WW, you have that redirecting properly. So to me, where I'm located and where I'm at, everything is running the way you have it designed. So if you put your DNA, I'll just double confirm with okay. it. Because it says 72 hours and in reality, it is 72 hours in some cases, but in most cases, it's right away that you're experiencing that. But if you've made changes multiple times, it just takes a while for all that stuff to get back. But I'm experiencing the way you should have it experienced right now. Okay. All right. Sure. I will send you the screenshot of that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. No worries. So question, how do I set up a meeting? Did I miss something? Is there a type of, okay, hold on. Sorry. I missed some things here. Has a cart. Try the, okay. Let me try that out. Look at this one. Oh, gotcha. So this was another WordPress theme. I see. I thought this was the theme you're trying to install. Yeah. So this one, not terrible either. It's not terrible. Of course, the e-commerce stuff is not going to work, obviously, because we don't have e-commerce built in for product-based stuff yet. It also has a lot of different, you can't right-click on things, and it has a bunch of plugins for security, and if that's what, one of the reasons why I even brought it up. Gotcha. Yeah, so you definitely, so a lot of these little things like that become difficult. And again, it's even the one-click import, a lot of those, unless you're going from WordPress to WordPress, you know, you're going to have a lot of those conversion issues with any CMS you go to. So I'm going to try to make it really easy to do this one click import from WordPress, but you're still going to have limitations based on your plugins. And like I said, if this is for you to move your business over, it's worth going through all those steps to flush out all those elements. But if this is for a client that doesn't care, wants a new website, or you're just trying to build themes, I wouldn't even start with the WordPress. I would completely start from these types of things. Is there a type of CAPTCHA pre-check for forms for anti-spam on Ligna? Yeah, so there's a technical way of doing it, like a more advanced way of doing it. I'm going to send the documentation over of how to do that within our forms. So inside our, the embed section of your site here, you're going to want to put in, where am I at? So you see the other system clicking up here. I need to bring that button back. 
So we're going to embed, you're going to have a little script that you embed for it. You're going to have to register for Google's CAPTCHA, get the API ID that you have for it, register your domain, which you'll end up putting in here, right? And then there's a little tag that you're going to need to find the ID of your data form, which, you know, your ID is up here um, for your ID. So you're going to apply it to it. And then now your form will use CAPTCHA if you're getting spam. I am releasing a spam overhaul, hopefully this evening. Cause I'm about sick of it too. I had them flushed out. I had them where they were struggling to infect us, but it seems like they've, they figured out my latest of tactics. I have another one that's going to really get them. Again, I hate capture and I know it prevents spam and things like that. A lot of these later things that are happening are still can get past it. So it's always going to be a problem, but the good news is whenever something comes in from one of our data forms, that gets flagged as spam. That IP address, that email address, the content they posted in actually gets flagged system-wide. So if you're seeing an uptick in spam, a lot of these updates I'm going to do by the end of the week, it should go back to normal. But what's really cool about it is system-wide. One may get them, but the rest don't for those specific things that they have. Do you have a, do you have a thing for like math or something like that simple math thing that people have to put in to, to actually register something? Or is that something you already tried? And then I'm done with questions, by the way. Oh, so you can certainly add that in for the, for that. I just never really liked those. I never really liked the robot test stuff. I guess everyone's so used to it now. We have the honeypot. We have a service called clean talk that checks it up. We also have a spam guard that looks it up through Barracuda. So there's a lot that we have already existing and they're still getting not as it's been more of a problem the last two weeks, but the new update on the spam will flush those out. And then of course, if you want the documentation on, on Capture, we can do that as well. Okay, well, we can do the same WordPress. Add the link to the page in the meeting template as confirmed page indeed regarding CMS clarify. Okay, so you just explain that. So did I miss that? How do I set a meeting confirmation page after you click schedule? How can I make it make? It? So if you're going to build a conference, I'll just go to the meeting pages real quick. Meeting pages. Your confirmation link is right here. This has to be the full URL you're going to. So if you're going to build a page in our system, just a sample little page that you're going to do on one of your sites, one of your domains, go in and create off the bootstrap, just drag a few elements over, get rid of the header or whatever, and just put some text in. Thank you. Whatever your URL is that you set up for that domain, you would set here. But if you have an internal page on your site, you can put that there. It's the full URL there. And that's exactly yes. how you do it. Is yes, that not so working for you? Yes. Yeah, so would I have to put the HTTPS inside or just the, like the block domain? Yeah. HTTPS. Then? Yep. So you're going to put that in the full URL that you just copy from the browser and throw that in there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I know we have a lot of different places, especially on the websites. The websites, you put the full URL, the branding on the back end, you don't put the full URL. I sure know how to make things confusing for sure. Okay. So hopefully that clears up your redirect. If not, there may be some other type of issue that I don't know about. And that would be very helpful to let me know if that doesn't work. Yeah. So, so I'll just confirm with you in like the next five to 10 minutes. Cool. Oh, and also when it comes to the meeting pages, that's the only time you have to put the confirmation link in that way, because this is actually completely outside of your website. So to confuse you even further. Inside your data forms, you have an option for a success URL. This doesn't have to be the full URL. This can be just thank you if you're on the same domain. So whatever domain that you're on, and this also includes for your external websites because it's whatever their page name is. If you want to throw the full URL, you can in here, but this is also relative. Back. So just think of the form as like inside your site. Your meeting pages, you have to do the full URL with HTTPS because it's outside of your actual website. And that's actually rendering that success page that goes out, but not to confuse you even further, but inside here, you could actually just do, if you want to go back to your homepage or render something else on the data form. You're at, trying to add a chat bot. Okay. So Dennis, if you're trying to add a chat bot, are you trying to add this to the back portal? Or are you trying to add this to a website? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm trying to add it to the website. Okay, cool. Perfect. So let me go ahead and do, I'm going to do this on the site that I imported over here. Let me give you the, here, use that one. I tried to put it in the code and it didn't show. I tried to put it in the header. It didn't show. Yeah. So this is where you're going to want to put it. So any type of 
code that you want to work, it, it doesn't, shouldn't be in the builder, meaning the user doesn't need this type of code to, or you don't need to make any changes to this code when you're working inside the builder. So think of it that way. If it's a code like analytic tracking, additional tools that you're using out there that you would use for whatever, like chatbots, whatever. You don't want to put it in there. Where you're going to want to put that is going to be in your settings in this embed section. You know, how I was mentioned about the preloader, like the preloader, yes, there are preloaders that you should be able to edit, such as the logo and everything else. So I got to work through how I'm going to handle these preloaders inside the builder itself, but throwing it here, this will not render in the builder or affect the builder. So whatever code you put here does not show up. So your tracking code, chat code, whatever. So in this case for your chat, they say at the end of the close of the body or in the head? They say in the body. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so this is just above the close of the body. This is the beginning of the body. So right up where the head closes. And then, so like Facebook will require you to put certain tags that they have. I forget what tag that they have that you need to put in there. Just right above where the body starts. So in this case, I put that hair there. And now when I go out to my site, where's your chat? Where does your chat widget normally show up? Does it, does your chat have a domain approval thing? I can find that out in just a second. Let me see. Yeah. So this is preventing, so that it's saying not found. So I don't know if that link is right, or this is just a security part because you don't have the domain whitelisted here. But that's how you do it. So it's pulling, right? So this is the UChats SDK that's pulling in the widget that would actually show up, but you're having an error on it because it's either the domain is not approved and that's what it is. You, you, my domain is not approved. There's no, I assume, but that's the error right there again, but it's in here. So the code's in here. It should render just fine. If you get your domain approved that you have set up on it and where it shows up again, doesn't show up in the builder. It's going to show up right, right here. The last thing that loads, right? So it's going to show up even below all the scripts, which is super helpful. If you have some conflicting JavaScript files in your theme that are not necessarily used to control what you see visually on the builder, but is important to render on the front end, you would throw it in here. So it gives you that control of adding that into there. But yeah, if you're trying to put that in the builder, that'll get removed inside this section cool. and then inside the builder, it'll try to move it to the bottom. And so it may not be where it's supposed to be. Because like I even tried to do an Im embed section too, but that wasn't working either. Yeah. So you, so the problem with that code, especially chat widget code, it's trying to inject itself inside here to pop up and have access to actually start using inside the builder. That's going to have a problem with the builder itself because we're trying to make it editable and that won't be editable. So using the embed option for the chat widget, this is more of, you can drop in code and put it in within here. And this gives you like whatever little plugins that you want to have or things like that, that'll certainly work. But for tracking, it was like chat stuff and tracking stuff. You want to put it in that setting section. So it's there and it doesn't affect the builder. In addition to that, as long as your domain's whitelisted with this particular chat provider, it should work. So if you're still experiencing a problem, let me know. Okay. I'm going to do some more research in terms of the, the domain, like making it white. white no white list. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. That's how I think you chat is set up to where you have a certain amount of domains. You can actually put the chat widget on. I think that's how they do their pricing model. I'm again, like I said, may not be the issue, but it is there. And I am seeing a 404 error for that particular chat widget when it loads. And it's using my domain, the domain demo today at Ligna, and it's converting it to their SDK. So some, something in their widget, that code that you gave me, the embed code is calling this file with our domain. And most likely the flow token doesn't match the domain. And so it's kicking back, not found because it's preventing it from loading on this domain. Mm -hmm. So being that said, I'm not saying that you can't work doing the embed code when you do custom code like this, it's just something, some codes like that work differently as far as where they try to render. 
So you may not be seeing it on your live site when you do it this way because the domain is not approved. Can I uh, add, I'll add your domain? Can we do that real quick? Yeah. So just tie, I don't know if you have to add the subdomain or the main domain, just do demo today.ligna.io. I'll put the main domain because I have multiple websites that I'm trying to use chatbots on. So I was thinking to just put the main domain and that would help, but uh, yeah, for this purpose, maybe demo today.ligna.io would be fine to add, or you could put ligna.io if you like, it's up to you. I'm trying to find that section here. So the next, yeah, whenever you find it, just chime back in and, and let me know. And then I can refresh here for you and just see if that error goes away. If there's something else we can troubleshoot inside of that. So how can I edit the name? In the meeting confirmation email, I thought there was an option for that. Meetings. So you should be able to invite name here. So the default is your profile name. So if you put your name here, whatever it may be, that's going to override it. This also your default profile email, which is your username, is the initial one that goes out. You can override it here. So you can put whatever you want as these two here to override it. So I've added a URL for meetings, but schedule doesn't continue. Do I need to log off and log in and then copy the meeting link? So I'm going to go out and take a look. Okay. So that looks good. So you're saying it doesn't continue to a confirmation page. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, it does not continue. Okay, so let me just see. Let me cheat for a second here. Time. Okay, so this issue is a totally different issue. This issue is related to your email setup. Let me get something real quick. Let me just. I can confirm whether that's an email issue or not, but let me see. Let me just go into find your, try to do this without showing anybody too much stuff. Yeah, so if you change that email, and I'm almost positive this is what it is, but. I guess I can save y'all a, a chat session with me. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this is the problem. I can't show your screen because it's your account, but inside branding, you go here to, oh shoot, I don't want to click that because I'll be into your account. Dude, dude, let me just log out and I'll just tell you what you have in there. Let me get out of your account here. Let me go into this. I know y'all can't see this, but I'm actually doing something over here. Okay. So if I go in, if you go into system, go to branding, this domain right here, super important. You got this as an email address. Super important you do not change this unless you have approved your domain. So this is our white label domain. So this means notifications from the system, whatever is being sent out. This is the white label domain. So it doesn't show Ligna. It's just us. It's all of us, right? This, what's happening is you have submitted a lead on your meeting page and the system is trying to send you a notification that you got a new meeting invitation. And it's failing, the lead's showing up in your back end, but it's failing because you're getting a, a non -authentic, an authentication error. So your domain is not approved. More importantly, it's not a domain. You actually put the full email in there. So you got to remove that, put secure-email.live back in there for now, and then get your email domain approved, which you would come into domains under settings. 
And here you're going to click on activate email approval, add these records. One thing I just want to point out too, this is confusing on DNS. So we give you the whole thing here just because some DNS is you got to paste that in that way. A lot of DNS is matter of fact, I probably shouldn't even put that in there and let you figure out that you got to add the domain. A lot of them append the domain automatically to your DNS record. So you're going to end up having an error that pops out that removes this part of it after the dot here and put your domain in so you won't have this in here. So this is the actual record. To the DNS, depending on your DNS, this is your domain here. So you may just be copying this section of it instead of all of this section when you put in your DNS. Just depends on your DNS provider. For instance, GoDaddy, you're only copying this. You're not pasting this whole thing in. You're just copying that. And then your value. And so once you get approved, check status, you get approved, then you can put your domain in that setting section, but it needs to be your domain without HTTP or whatever, no at symbol or whatever. So that's why you're having an issue with that is because you're having an email authentication issue. So Andrea, I know exactly what you're saying now that I've read it three times and I keep saying the wrong thing to you. So you want to change an internal page like... I have all these pages here, especially in the dark side theme where you can have whatever. You want to make that your homepage. And I'm not done with that. That is a great feature functionality that we need to have where you can just say, I want this now to be my homepage. And you can swap between homepages all you want based on that. That's not the case with what I was saying. That's just for linking in your navigation. Unfortunately, the only way to make one of those pages your homepage is to copy the code from the previous one and add it into the code section from the main homepage. That's coming. Sooner than later, you'll have a little icon here that will give you the option of converting that page to a homepage. That is totally my fault. And every time you ask me the last two times, I gave you the wrong answer. So I appreciate that. Like every time I do these calls, I just end up talking too much and probably showing too much. So hopefully it's not information overload. Hopefully this was beneficial and you've learned a few things. I, like I said, I, I need the courses because not everyone adapts to these very long meetings like this. If you have any more information, any more issues, it doesn't have to be related to the CMS. I have another 15, 20 minutes here that I can continue on and help you out, save you a chat trip and we can go from there. So how can I edit the name and the meeting confirmation email? Oh, I'm sorry. You gave me a picture. So the name, ooh, you can't, I need to make that available. So you're right. I can make that available for you to change as part of the settings for the meeting page. I did not realize that is using your username and profile and not your company name as who is inviting you from that invitation. My apologies there on that. That's not where you edit the name. That's that is not, edit, you can't edit that yet. So I need to make that a feature for sure. That's an easy one though. I've changed the domain to secure.live, but it still won't continue on. Okay. No, not the domain. So you change the domain, the second one for the email, correct? Just to confirm. The first one. Oh yeah. So no, the first one is going to be your branded domain. The second one, notifications domain. This is what you want to be secure-email.live. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Sorry about that. Yeah, the second one, not the first one. Happy to stay on as well until you until you got to redirect and troubleshoot it more for you. But that's so for me, I'm having a I can't remember where the the Thing that I need to find, but I have a different question. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to have be the website where I can run Python on. Do you have any experience with that? Yeah. So <clears throat> you could, I, I don't know if this is like the right form for it. Yeah. So for you, so there's a couple things, right? Python, I said, uh, PHP is the only language that we don't allow to import obviously python too just with a lot of different scripts that you can do just to obviously take over our infrastructure very quickly by allowing you to have access to that stuff so what i'm in the works of building are going to be your own customized widgets that you're able to build into the platform and of course they got to go through just some qa 
that actually sits on another instance that we include into the platform. So that's where it's going to go. And I'm not hundred percent understanding what you're using Python on your site. Is this just more the functionality that you have built into your site? Or is there a specific feature functionality that you're using that for? But yes, yeah. it's going to come. So I'll put, so PyScript, right? They're saying you can use Python inside of HTML. The idea is that I want to build like a dashboard where you can upload a file and it just displays it. Yeah, so um, that sounds awesome and definitely can figure out how we can work to make that possible, but also keeping the security from just the entire system itself. Not so really. go ahead. So what you're saying is that you, you don't have, you don't have that capability yet. Yeah. So I don't, because I haven't thought of it and not only have I haven't thought of it, I'm not saying we don't, I just can't speak to it just yet. There's probably a simple way for us to do that for sure. I just haven't even had a, a, any, Me. I'm looking at another monitor right now. So I definitely will, I'm interested in figuring out how we can make that work. If there's an option for us to make it work right now today out of the box. Oh, nice. So next question. So yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks for sharing that. I'm definitely going to be having some fun looking at that tonight. So what about Facebook page tracking? No CSS involved. Hey, thank you so much. So P Facebook page tracking is just, a, is going into that setting section. So if you're in the funnels, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Templates funnels. So going to that site that we just set up, click on settings, click on embed. And the page, I believe some of their tracking, one of the tags has to go at the beginning of the body, not in the head. So you have all three options that you can put it in. So you just put it in right in here in this section, whatever you get. So in the leads columns, how can I change the name of a column? So you can't change the name of a column, but as of yesterday, was it yesterday or the other day? I can't remember when I did that post. It was either yesterday or today. At any rate, you can actually create your own custom columns. So you go into your data fields and set up all of your custom lead fields. So you come in here and set up any column I want. Now these are your lead data fields, right? So this is what's showing up. This is different than your data forms. These are your fields, your custom lead fields. So when you're in a lead view, you hit edit, you can make changes to this and it shows up on the left-hand side. So you can add in all your custom columns and then in here in the lead view, so this is any column here. So inside my lead, you can see, did I not apply that? Hold on. Oh, cause I'm in a, I was in a workspace lead. Okay. So I need a global lead, but at any rate, you have all the different options that you can do on your columns. And so now you can turn the column on or turn it off. And so inside here, if you want to turn off all these columns and let's say you want a different name for phone or whatever. So you can't rename them, but you're going to, you're basically going to create your own column names and then this all saved. So just turn them on here, whatever column you name you want. These are all our default ones. And you can of course turn all these off and then you can have all your custom down here and figure it out. Matter of fact, I do also have in the works where you're going to be able to change every language tab. I rolled it out actually last night for someone who's collecting cat data. So he didn't want it to be called leads or anything else like that. So it's all everything. You can actually manipulate all of the tabs and call them whatever you want now, which is real cool. But yeah, unfortunately the columns, you're not going to be able to rename the columns because these are our global system fields, but you can create your own columns with your own names and turn them on and off and do whatever you want over here. How about Kristen, John? Yep. With the column, with the data field, can you collect data and then display data? For example, I want somebody, and in addition to that, can you just have a button and then have a hidden field and this hidden field has a number? And then you say, okay, when the user click this, I want to see that one user click this. So it would be an interesting way to build like what picture you like the best click here. So when it click here, it just count it. So are you talking about here on this lead view being able to do just in general, I want to know if I can create a Ligna form, right. To collect data and then display that same data on the page. 
Yeah. So yeah, you can, you can absolutely do that with through JavaScript and where are you going to save that data? That's where it comes into hit, creating hidden fields. You could create hidden fields on your data form. And then if clicked on this, so all your data forms. So if you go out to, where's one that I have a data form on, I'm just going to link it. So on your data forms, you have inside, they all have their own individual IDs. So you have all these little IDs. So right. you could write a little JavaScript and then if they click on it, or whatever you have in here, then you could supply that data to a hidden field when you create a form field. So when you create a form and then create a field, you have hidden and that hidden has its own ID too. And so you could just set the value of that. And so when it saves and they submit, then in the lead view, you'll have all that data that they clicked on or whatever. You could do radio buttons maybe and have them click on a radio button, say which one do you like better, or those kinds of things. But again, you're also getting that data that they actually said that this one is better too for that field. So, so I would have to have somewhere to store it other than Ligna? So no, you could store it using the data. It would always come into your lead view. Right. So if you can give me write up your exact use case of exactly what you are looking for. I can tell you exactly how to do it with Ligna or, Hey, it can't be done with Ligna. Here's some things that we're doing to make it work for you. Or this is what I would do to make it work. At any rate, if you can provide me more detail kind of written out on chat, I'll definitely look at it and give you some guidance on how you could do it within the system. Okay. Will do. Thanks. No problem. So does VoIP numbers not support international calling and SMS? Depends on the country. And I've debated this over the last year internally. Of <clears throat> what countries do we want to allow cross calling? And so there's, I don't know if you've seen some of these companies out there that are a little bit like our size that have these VoIP providers. They get killed for premium number calling. And it's hard to prevent that. Um, without shutting off an entire country from calling each other. Depends on the country that you're calling. And I am going to look at some other options to prevent the security risk that comes with that by opening up some of these country to country calls. So it just depends on the country that you're calling. But you absolutely should be able to call international unless it's blocked. How do I delete my old workspace? So South Africa, Depends on what country you're, are, are you in the U S calling South Africa or are you in South Africa? You shouldn't have a problem obviously calling in South Africa to South Africa. What country are you in? So the, how do I delete my old workspace? For example, old pixel data, I have a C CD and how can I show the fifth file of my customer uploaded data? So to delete a workspace. And I assume you're saying, I want to remove all the data from my dashboard. Unfortunately, the dashboard is still pulling in your, your old history. Of course, if you're not using that pixel anymore over time. So basically what you want to do is just completely flush out my tracking data and clean that, clean it up to where it's completely blank and starting from there or a workspace and completely clean that data out from the workspace. That's not. It, when you delete a workspace, it doesn't remove the stats from it and it should, that's a good point. So I will look at that as far as how we can make that more efficient when you delete. So when you delete a pixel that I'm not sure we want, when you delete a pixel for all that stats to go away, I got to figure out what the UI flow would be, or at least the warnings of what you want to do or the options when you're deleting a pixel and the data that comes out of the system. And then of course, workspaces. So I will definitely put some thought into that. But right now, if you delete a workspace, the stats that you had in there still show up, including the phone calls, right? It's not purging anything from that workspace. It's just making it unavailable to access those assets that you built in that workspace. Can I move one funnel in my system account into a workspace? I don't see the option. What's the funnel? So you should, there should be an option right inside the settings. And if not, I definitely need to get that added. Let me go in and try real quick. You should see in the settings, just like the, uh, where am I going? Okay. So you're not, yeah, you should have it right here to change the workspace. So I'll get that added. And that's not a feature request that I got to spend some time on that. It's just something we can get added real quick to switch it. So you would switch it here. You would come in and switch your workspace or apply a workspace. 
Next, I have a, C, a CV form. How can I show the file my customer uploaded in my data form? I tried to see last time, but it didn't work. Show the file my customer uploaded to my data form. So you mean in the back end as far as uploading your CSV file? So if you've tried, yeah, if you try to upload anything prior to yesterday, I would go back in there and do it. Because right now, <clears throat> you, the errors that you were having before needing to be CSV UTF-8, needing to have all the columns the exact same, needing the column names to be the same, all those issues don't exist anymore. So you can go in and as long as you have at least enough data to show up and represent here, it'll import. Matter of fact, I've been monitoring the import process over the last 24 hours and there hasn't been a single error. And usually there's 10 to 20% of file uploads or errors. So I think we, we did pretty good on this last update. On website CV form for resume. So could certainly create a form for resume on there. I don't know if that's what, I don't know if you're asking for his question or for me. Yeah, so US to South Africa, US number to South Africa is not going to work. I'm pretty sure. I'll confirm on that. Yeah, so let me let me confirm on that. So I'm pretty sure US is not going to call South Africa. I can't off the top of my head. There's just so many different variations that are in there, but like I said, I'm going to start looking at all these different options. I know there's a lot that are buying numbers from, or not buying, activating numbers from, I'm buying them, activating numbers from different countries and then calling into other countries from those numbers. And I just didn't really think about that scenario. And so there's a lot of regulation that happens as far as security standpoint that I wasn't hundred percent familiar with. So definitely need to look at that. So I know Kevin, you've asked me this at least twice more times than I've missed on the ADF format. So the ADF format, and I don't know where we left that last chat. Hopefully I just need to go back and you gave me a, the actual email example. The ADF format is just set when it sends out. I don't have a system-wide switch to make you determine whether it's going to be an ADF email or a regular email format that goes out. So I will figure out the easiest solution for you to temporarily do that until I make that a fully functional feature for you to determine, does this, is this the format that my email account's going to send out of? So that's a hundred percent coming. So I appreciate that. And I apologize. You would throw up if you saw how many chats our system has right now. I apologize that I didn't get back to you on that. In the map to section, it doesn't let me map my data field to a column new name. Yeah. So it doesn't, but we built an algorithm that is I've tried all sorts of different scenarios. So if in your columns, so in your data form, you don't have to only include when you import. So when you, I mean, you click here, you click your data form and you download this. This is only showing you your fields in your data form, but you can add whatever fields you want now. So you can add as many columns as you like, and it'll insert all that data in the data form details. In addition to that, if that column matches with one of your custom fields that you've set up, it'll automatically go to those. And the easiest way to make sure it matches is just name in your data form, in your CSV, just name it the same as what you named it on your custom data field. And then that way, when you import it, everything matches. We do have a pretty good algorithm that does that. Uh, so you won't need to on the custom. So you won't need to just add it to your CSV. So when I download this CSV, oh yeah, I forgot I'm sharing my entire screen so you can see everything I'm doing now. If this will hurry up and load. So you see how this came in with just first name, last name, email, phone, company. Those are my data form fields. But then I can add whatever I want, custom field name and put whatever here, right? And continue to grow this out. And then this will map to all your custom fields. This is for importing, so not for exporting. Yeah, my question is basically, if I'm in the dashboard, right, in the data form section, I go to the, click on the data form, like, for example, if I have a contact form, and I click on that contact form, and then I click on the fields that are inside that contact form, and I click on map to, it doesn't let me, it doesn't give me an option. So you know how there's like first name, last name, alt, phone number, email, to map to section, it doesn't give me the new column name. So I can map to it. Yeah. So you don't have, 
So are you talking about when I embed this data form and I fill out that data form, it's not going to your custom forms? You're not talking about importing it into the system. You're talking about external forms, correct? Yeah, I'm talking about in, like internal in the leads data area, like in your leads dashboard. But are you, you talking you know, exactly where you are at, where you were? For yeah. importing, right? No, not for importing. When someone fills out a data form, right? Do you know how these data forms are going yeah. to first name, okay. email, last name? I want that to be, I want my question field to be mapped into my question column. Yeah. So here's the thing. That feature functionality is coming from the, so import was first, secondary is data form. So all external data forms and pixels will support custom fields. I know probably everyone in the world hates it when I say it's coming in days. It literally is done. I released this first and anything for external. So right now, external data forms, and you won't need a map to, by the way, you just need to make sure that the field name that you name on your data form matches your custom field form name. And that will always match. The reason why you match it over here is because you have no control of this field. And so you may have email address or email or phone number or street or whatever in your data form here, and you need it to map to our global fields. If you are setting up custom fields, Name them the same and you will never have to worry about this map to for custom fields. But that feature doesn't exist is all I'm saying. It, it's done. I need to get it out. The first one we did was import. So import, if you want to import your data that matches your columns, then we'll, you can do that here. But for the external data forms and those types of things, we'll go ahead and get that pushed out as soon as possible because that's exactly what you're asking for on the internal. And it just doesn't exist yet. Okay, so later, so you're going to be able to add it later. So how we'll, we'll be able to import, I mean, map the field to the column, right? Yeah, exactly. So you'll be able to map, you won't need a map to is what I'm saying. As long as the field name is the same, as far as your data form, because you're actually controlling that. You're creating the custom field and the custom data field inside the system. So just name them the same and you won't have to worry about map toing. That's only for when the names are different than our system. Since you're controlling the custom global fields, just name them the same and they'll map to perfectly. However, that feature doesn't exist on the external data forms right now. That will be pushed out and it will. So you won't have to do anything. It'll map to as long as on your data form, the field name is the same as the custom field that you set up, then you're good. And I'll let everyone know when that's live. Because I know a lot is asked about that and the pixel. Pixel will have mapping though, because that you can't control what your data, what your form name is already on your external website. That's not our form. That's legacy within within Liga. All right, I appreciate everyone. I'll get this out, and if you missed the first half, and load it up onto Facebook. But like I said. We will have the one import by URL. This is a lot of information on the import process, but again, it's not really that difficult if you can just get over that head and footer and just make sure your assets map. And then in addition to that, making sure you're starting with a good theme for sure within there. So there's one here. Is there a workaround with a webhook for calling or sending SMS internationally or using my own Twilio account? You, we are definitely going to allow Plevo. I've already had that set up to where you can get your own API key for that. The examples that you're talking about, as far as U.S. and South Africa, just get, give me a day or two to figure out why those are blocked and what the risks are and see if it even makes sense to even have them blocked. So we certainly are going to allow Plevo for those cases. I know there's several scenarios where others have begged to do that, to, to have their own Plevo account, and which is very easy for us to do, by the way, to expose that to everyone. But we are definitely going to do that, but not Twilio just yet that. Okay. I appreciate everyone's time and I look forward to posting this video. If you have any additional questions after this, please jump on chat and we'll get to you as soon as possible. I appreciate everyone. You have a great rest of your evening. Thank you, John. Appreciate Thank you. John. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, John. Thanks, John.